Uh, next, we're going to combine sections 24 and 25. 24 is on the acidity of carboxylic acids. And 25 is on the salts of carboxylic acids. And that section, we are 25, we're going to kind of squeeze in the middle of 24. So not really going to come in order here, but uh, all the essential stuff is going to get covered. So uh, first of all, Recall that the carboxylic acids are weak acids, which means that when they are put into water, they will react with water in equilibrium to produce deprotonated conjugate base and hydronium ion. The uh, deprotonated conjugate base of the carboxylic acid is often referred to as a salt. A lot of times it's, well all the time it's going to have some sort of counter cation, but a lot of times it's going to, the deprotonation process is going to be aided by something like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, and there's going to be a cation like a sodium ion or a potassium ion that uh, counters the negative charge of the, of the, um, of the anion here. Technically, this anion is referred to as an alkanoate, and if you know specifically what the alkyl group is for this anion, you can give the, the name uh, more meaning. For example, if this is a two-carbon anion, we would refer the, to this as an ethanoate ion. For example, let's look at a specific reaction. Uh, for this, this m molecule, as you know, is acetic acid, commonly, or ethanoic acid, by IUPAC. The name of its conjugate base, the anion, could be acetate. So we're taking the um, everything except for the ick and putting eight at the ending of it. So it's the acetate ion, or it would be the ethano eight. A little bit awkward. All that we drop though from the acid parent name is the ick and we replace that with an 8 to get the name of the anion. Let's do a couple more. Let's say um, let's say we have benzoic acid And we're going to react it with a little sodium hydroxide. So it's going to deprotonate the benzoic acid. There's going to be a sodium cation countering that. And we're going to have a little bit of water formed from the deprotonation, the, the hydrogen being plucked off by the hydroxide. This anion is benzo 8 ion and collectively the cation and the anion together would be referred to as sodium benzoate. Because the carboxylic acids are all weak acids, 
we can write an equilibrium expression for them. So if we're going to go back to this. Um, we're going to go back to this generic equation, and we're going to write an equilibrium expression Ka for that's going to be applicable for any carboxylic acid. Remember from Gen Chem, and we also did this a little bit in Chapter 19 as well. The equilibrium expressions are products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, which is always one in these uh, simple carboxylic acids, not dioic acids, leaving out pure liquids such as water and also pure solids if they were present. So the equilibrium expression is going to be the concentration of the alkanoate ion times the concentration of the hydronium ion divided by the concentration of the carboxylic acid. And the value of the equilibrium constant, Ka, gives us information about the relative strength of the carboxylic acid. The stronger, remember acidic strength is just a de description of how much or to what extent this acid dissociates or reacts with water in this equilibrium process. So a strong acid is going to be an acid that is more dissociated or reacted. Position of equilibrium further to the right. Because it has position of equilibrium further to the right, this means that it has a high concentration, a higher concentration of the products. the alkanoate and the hydronium ion. Because it has a higher concentration of the products, it's going to have a larger value of Ka. And remember in chapter 19, we talked about how organic chemists like to express these numbers as pKa's or pKb's is what we talked about in chapter 19. And a large Ka value is going to be associated with a small or a smaller pKa. So small pKa equals strong acid. I'm going to make sure that you make that connection. Just like uh, when we were talking about the amines, there are things about the structure of the carboxylic acid that will help us predict the relative strength of the acid, especially if we're comparing it to the structure of another acid. And the rules, um, the trends are pretty much exactly the same as the ones that we saw for the amines, only the effects are opposite because with our amines, uh, when they were reacting with water, they were forming cations, positively charged ammonium salts, and in these cases, we're forming anions, so uh, the, the effects are going to be exactly the same, but they're going to have an opposite impact on, on the uh, acidity basicity. So for example, just like with uh, the stuff that we talked about with the amines, if the alkanoate ion is stable, this means that the acid is going to be strong or stronger. If the acid is okay to exist in the alkanoate form, if that alkanoate ion is pretty stable, that dissociation reaction can go ahead and proceed. The more dissociated the substance is, by definition, the stronger of an acid it is. And the following things are going to stabilize the alkanoate ion. Electronegative elements, especially things like halogens, and especially if they're close to the carboxylate group, the deprotonated group, they are going to, because they're electronegative, they're electron withdrawing, they're going to be pulling electron density away from the negative ion, which is going to help to stabilize it, because it's going to help to pull that charge away so that the negative charge isn't just going to have to be spread out or delocalized among only three atoms. It can pull it away and spread it out over, over even more. So the electronegative elements, such as halogens, stabilize the anion, the alkanoate, and this means that the acid is stronger. 
stronger than one that did not have halogens present.